So the consensus is that DeAndre Ayton, a center out of Arizona, and Luka Doncic, a perimeter player overseas, are the two best players in the upcoming NBA draft. And if that is the case, then NBA teams are going to be fiending for the opportunity to select one of these two players with the number one overall pick in the draft. So we're going to look at some teams towards the top of the lottery. Who could use one of these two players the most? Is it the Atlanta Hawks? Is it the Dallas Mavericks with Dennis Smith Jr. at the point guard position? Perhaps it's the Memphis Grizzlies who are hanging on by a thread with Marc Gasol and Mike Conley. Perhaps uh, the Phoenix Suns pairing up Devin Booker with one of these two guys. And it's safe to say that it's going to be one of those four teams because there's like a over 70% chance of that happening. So apologies to Sacramento Kings fans who could really use the number one overall pick. It's probably not going to happen. You could still get someone good. And the same thing can be said for the New York Knicks. As they won too many games to have a real chance uh, landing that high in the lottery. Still technically possible though. Now before we go into those teams, mainly the top four, let's just dive into Aiton and Doncic a little bit more. Aiton seems like he can be a force around the basket, uh, grabbing offensive rebounds, finishing around the rim, low post moves, uh, but he's shown an ability to also hit from outside as well. He could really be a a special offensive player. Now, can the defense come around? That's going to be a question. And then Doncic, it's his all-around game. I mean, if you ask him to be a ball handler, he can lead your offense and make crisp passes uh, to get guys easy buckets, but he can also take on the scoring load himself as his ability to get to the rim combined with his shooting makes it uh, to where he's probably going to put up a lot of points in the NBA. Let's start with the Atlanta Hawks. The big question with them is how good is Dennis Schroeder? I think at this point it's fair to say that while he can be a decent enough player, he can't be the best guy on a championship team. Now, can he be the third best player on a title team? Uh, Potentially, even then that might be a little too positive for the guy, but he has some abilities nonetheless, right? His box score numbers are not bad. Now, when you watch the Hawks day in and day out, I think he has problems in terms of over-dribbling and sometimes not catching teammates when they're open, but at the same time, he's never had the best talent around him either. So if you just gave him another star player or a star player, then that would definitely help him out. But at the same time, I got to go with my gut feeling here that Schroeder's just simply not good enough to lead a team and say the Hawks could really use a guy who would go number one overall. Now we can talk about Torian Prince a little bit as well. I think he's a quality piece. And if you allowed him to go a step down in the pecking order in terms of shots, that could allow him to be a more efficient offensive player. He can do some other things besides just score. So there's them. Uh, The Dallas Mavericks, to me, have um, a point guard in Dennis Smith who should end up being better than Schroeder on the Hawks because, I mean, he just seems like he's going to live at the basket. And if the jump shot can come around, then he's going to be one of the best offensive players in the league to me because we saw it even this year the way the defense is schemed to try to not allow him to go downhill is the phrase that coaches used all the time that's scary stuff he's got a lot of Russell Westbrook John Wall prime Derrick Rose in him so he should be special if you ask me And, and because of that I don't know if the Mavericks need the first pick as much as some of the other teams here if you gave them the third or fourth pick and they ended up with a very good player that might be all they need given how good I believe Dennis Smith is going to be the Memphis Grizzlies are in a awkward position to me because you've got Marcus Gasol who I think can still give you some wins even as he gets older Uh, but the real problem with them is they're just having a money issue Given the market that they're in, it's tough for them to really uh, churn a profit. And that has made it to where the owners have been really apprehensive in moving Marcus Gasol because he still gets people to attend the games. So if you could get someone who could just get people to buy some jerseys and actually attend the arena, that would be huge. If we can talk about Mike Conley, I think he gives you a few more years after Gasol where... You could at least be maybe a respectable team. 
so that maybe doesn't give them as much urgency as the Atlanta Hawks. But even so, Conley caps out at what, the 15th best player in the league, maybe? If we get to the Phoenix Suns, they have probably the best player out of all the teams that could end up with the, uh, the top pick, because Devin Booker seems like the dude can put up 30 points a game at some point in his NBA career. And he just gets better every season, and given that he has not had that great a talent around him, but he's been able to improve his efficiency, shoot more three-pointers, get to the free-throw line more often, the sky's the limit for him. And I think Phoenix, while it would be great to pair up like Luka Doncic with Booker, I mean, the, the ceiling would be huge offensively. I think Atlanta is probably the team here who is most in need of the top pick, because I just don't see a superstar here. And until you acquire that player, it's tough to see how a rebuild can really be successful. So that would be my choice. But whoever it may be who gets the number one pick and the number two pick should be said, they'll be set up really nice for the future with these two guys at the top of the draft.